pulpits and cry out liberty, freedom and enfranchisement. People and senators, be not affrighted. Fight out. Stand still. Ambition stat is paid. Go to the pulpit, Brutus. And Cassius, too. Stand fast together, lest some friend of Caesar. Lock out of standing. Publius, good cheer. There is no harm intended to your person, not under Roman else. So tell them, Publius. And leave us, Publius. Listen to the people rushing on us to do your aid somehow. Do so. And let no man abide this deed. But we, the doers. Where is Antony? Fled to his house amazed. Men, wives, and children stare, cry out, and run as if it were doomsday. Stoop, Romans. Stoop. And let us bathe our hands in Caesar's blood. Then walk we forth even to the marketplace, and waving our red weapons o'er our heads, let's all cry peace, freedom, and liberty. Stoop then and wash. How many times shall Caesar bleed in sport that now on Pompey's basis lies along no worthier than the dust? So oft as that shall be, so often shall the knot of us be called the men who gave their country liberty. Well, shall we forth? Aye, every man away. Brutus shall lead, and we will grace his heels with the most boldest and best hearts of Rome. Soft, who comes here? Welcome, Mark Antony. Almighty Caesar, dost thou lie so low? Are all thy conquests, glories, triumphs, spoils shrunk to this little measure? Fare thee well. I know not, gentlemen, what you intend. Who else must be let blood? 
who else is rank. If I myself, there is no hour so fit as Caesar's death hour, nor no instrument of half that worth as those your swords made rich with the most noble blood of all this world. I do beseech ye, if you bear me hard now, whilst your purpled hands do reek and smoke, fulfill your pleasure. Live a thousand years, I shall not find myself so apt to die. No place will please me so, no mean of death is here by Caesar and by you cut off the choice and master spirits of the age. Oh, Antony, beg not your death of us, though now we must appear bloody and cruel, as by our hands, and this our present act you see we do. Yet see you but our hands, and this the bleeding business they have done. Our hearts you see not, they are pitiful. For your part, to you our swords have leaden points, Mark Antony. Your voice shall be as strong as any man's in the disposing of new dignities. Only be patient till we have appeased the multitude beside themselves with fear. And then we will deliver you the cause why I that did love Caesar when I struck him have thus proceeded. I doubt not of your wisdom. Let each man render me his bloody hand. First, Marcus Brutus, will I shake with you. Next, Caius Cassius, do I take your hand. Caesar, if thy spirit look upon us now, shall it not grieve thee dearer than thy death to see thy Antony making his peace? shaking the bloody fingers of thy foes, most noble in the presence of thy corpse. Mark Antony. Pardon me, Caius Cassius. Will you be pricked in number of our friends, or shall we honor not depend on you? Friends, am I with you all, and love you all. Upon this hope, that you shall give me reasons why and wherein Caesar was dangerous. Or else this were a savage spectacle. Our reasons are so full of good regard that were you, Antony, the son of Caesar, you should be satisfied. That's all I seek. And am moreover suitor that I may produce his body in the marketplace and in the pulpit as becomes a friend, speak in the order of his funeral. You shall, Mark Anthony. Brutus, a word with you. No, no, what you do. Do not consent that Anthony speak in his funeral. Know you not how much the people may be moved by that which he will utter? By your pardon. I will myself into the pulpit first and show the reason of our Caesar's death. What Antony shall speak, I will protest he does by leave and by permission. And that we are contented Caesar shall have all true rites and lawful ceremonies advantage more than do us wrong. I know not what may fall. I like it not. Mark Antony. Here, take you Caesar's body. You shall not in your funeral speech blame us. But speak all good you can devise of Caesar and say you do it by our permission. Else shall you not have any hand at all about his funeral. And you shall speak in the same pulpit whereto I am going after my speech is ended. Be it so. I do desire no more. Prepare the body then and follow us. Pardon me, thou bleeding piece of earth, that I am meek and gentle with these butchers. Thou art the ruin of the noblest man that ever lived in the tide of times. Woe 
to the hand that shed this costly blood. Over thy wounds now do I prophesy. A curse shall light upon the limbs of men. Domestic fury and fierce civil strife shall cumber all the parts of Italy. Blood and destruction shall be so in use and dreadful objects so familiar that mothers shall but smile when they behold their infants quartered with the hand of war. And Caesar's spirit ranging for revenge with Ate by his side come hot from hell shall in these confines with a monarch's voice cry havoc. And let slip the dogs of war. Caesar, do you know? I do, Mark Antony. Caesar did right for him to come to Rome. He did receive his letters and his coming. And bid me say to you by word of mouth. Oh, Caesar. Passion I see is catching. Is your master coming? He lies this night within seven leagues of Rome. Ah, here's a morning Rome. Dangerous Rome. No Rome of safety for Octavius yet. Right, Henson, tell him so. Yet stay a while. Till I've borne this corpse into the marketplace. And tried there how the people take the cruel issue of these 